Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Today I'm going to talk about a novel method to speed up calibrating horizontal well performance models with multi-stage fraction treatments and its applications in the Delaware Basin. This was written by several folks from University Lands and Texas A&M University. As an objective of the study, it's to present a new method to speed up the calibration process of well performance models with multi-million cells and its two applications in the Wolf Camp Reservoir in the Delaware Basin. The methodology of this work is the complex fracture is modeled and the fracture conductivity distributions are based on the historical completion pumping data. It's developed using multiple correlations to characterize fracture conductivity reduction and closure behaviors with pressure depletion based on initial fracture conductivities as a result of prop and type, size and concentration, and the reservoir geomechanical properties. The method is significantly reduced on the model calibration time. This is applied to the method of multiple cases in the Permian Basin to test and improve the method. This is a background on the permeability reduction mechanism where through stress increases on the propent with production time. And then you also notice the well production history and corresponding stress on the propent. The stress on the propent is in red. The flowing bottom hole pressure is in the mustard color on the chart that's on the very left. And then you'll notice the reservoir pressure is also hasn't changed much, but you'll notice the fracture conductivity or the stress on the prop and change, and the fracture conductivity is also declining, which is in blue. You'll also notice the, the chart on the right where the stress of prop is increasing, there is a flowing bottom hole pressure that's decreasing. You'll also notice that there are a couple equations on determining stress or effective stress. So that is shown in the two equations that are below. Now I'll talk about the numerical simulation methods to mimic permeability reduction in hydraulic fractures. There are four methods as far as permeability reduction goes. There's the possible post-completion propent concentration distribution. More propent settles down near the wellbore area and there's little propent at the fracture tips. There's also stress on the propent along the fracture length. Initially the closer stress on the propent is the same along the fractures. The possible fracture perm reduction with time, with depletion and higher stress on the propent. The frac permeability reduces and the frac dimensions shrink. And there's also the possible prop fracture dimensions over time. Here's a display of some of the possible prop and distribution simulation or model setup and then there's also an example of unstructured grid of permeability distribution as well shown in previous papers that have been published by university lands there's also a couple figures of fracture conductivity versus propent concentration and the fracture conductivity obviously increases with increasing propent concentration after a certain period of time and then there's fracture conductivity changes with proper concentration and closure stress. So you're, you have your conductivity increase with the prop and concentration increase under different closure stresses. So at high or lower closure stresses, you're going to have higher conductivity. Now we'll talk about the fracture permeability reduction model that has speeded up the calibration process. You'll notice the equation of that is shown here. I represents the ith permeability reduction zone. Sigma H is the horizontal stress on fractures, which may vary formation depth. Alpha I and beta I are perm reduction characteristic variable parameters in zone I. And the fracture width or zero cutoff means the fracture closure cutoff value. The fracture closure cutoff value should be a function of rock Young's modulus. The paper suggests a higher value for soft rock with lower Young's modulus because it's easy for propent embedment. I'll talk about the first case that was used for this new method, which is in the Delaware Basin. Three wells were drilled and completed with 880 foot spacing. The goal of the study was to find out if there was any better completion designs for the reservoir in the area. Then they took the middle well for the reservoir performance modeling with the fracture perm model where they assigned firm perm four perm reduction zones based on the completion history and the resulted prop and concentration distributions. The 
Images on the right represent the complex fracture model, the frac permeability reduction model, and four zones that have been designed, and then the reservoir performance history matching. Based on previous experience, the history matching has actually reduced in time quite a bit. Then I'll talk about the case two or the parent-child wells and the scenario is shown on the left where you have your parent well and then 1700 feet away you have completed the well six months after well one then 1500 feet away you've completed two years after well one's been put onto production then well four has been completed at the same time as well three Figure 18, or the chart on the right, or the figure on the right, shows the pressure depletion modeling snapshot for each subsequent well. You'll then notice the perm reduction models that are used, the history matching that has taken place, and then the stress-dependent perm coefficients and the SRV was reduced to about 34.6% with the stress-dependent perm. The SRV is shrinking with depletion and time at snapshot one, and then you'll notice the stress-dependent perm coefficient that was selected at snapshot four, and the SRV was reduced at about 85%. Based on the conclusions of the paper, they've noted that they were able to come up with a permeability reduction model that speeded up the calibration time and improved the representation of reservoir performance for the long term. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. As usual, feel free, please like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on the video on the YouTube platform so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this presentation, and I'll see you in the next one.